Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to my four step supply and demand trading strategy process. And I'm going to say right from the start, this is not your simple technical analysis, rally based drop, drop based rally video that you're probably used to seeing, you know, 99.999% of other videos, you know, go into, um, uh, you know, these these typical supply and demand videos. This is not your typical. If you want to learn something and learn something from a very, very advanced level, yeah, if you're looking for something simple, then click away. If you're looking to really watch and learn something, yeah, then keep watching because this video is going to show you something that and concepts that you're probably not even, you know, aware of. And in the Forex market, we need every single edge we can get in order for us to be successful. And this is what I do week in, week out, you know, with um, the Trading 180 community and, uh, and members. So uh, let's get into it. Before the technical setups, what we look for and what I look for is uh, fundamentals, yeah? And again, there's a debate out there that says fundamentals do work, fundamentals don't work, etc. You know, price is not driven by technical analysis. I can tell you that now, yeah? Price is not driven by technical analysis. Price does not indicate value and value is not indicated um, always on price, yeah? If, you know, there's a difference between um, the reasons why you enter and the reason why prices move. Price is coming down to, you know, a demand zone or up into a supply zone and then you seeing some sort of pin bar and engulfing candle and then price is reversing you know, based off of, you know, a, a supply zone or demand zone and price action is not the reason why prices moved. It's not. Yeah. It might be a reason for entry, but it's not the reason why prices move. Price moves based off of monetary policy, economic cycles, risk sentiment and price manipulation. Those are why price, um, those are the reasons why price um, on in the Forex market moves, you know, day to day week to week, etc. Yeah. So Forex Factory, a lot of people think that Forex Factory, um, you know, is fundamental trading. So they go to Forex Factory and then, you know, they say, all right, and let's uh, go to some sort of important data. And then what we'll do is we'll see if um, uh, the actual is better or worse than forecast. If it's worse, then, you know, I'll sell. If it's better, then I'll buy it again. Um, it's that's not fundamental trading <laughs> that really is a fundamental trading and that's one of the reasons why um traders uh, are disillusioned with you know the fundamentals fundamental trading is looking at the bigger picture so what i do is um you know what's been compiled is um a fundamental analysis spreadsheet and i look at certain data certain really important macroeconomic data like gdp inflation and interest rates and every country um uh, is given a score, yeah, and a cumulative ranking against each other. So, um, the United States at the moment, their cumulative score based off of the macroeconomic data, you know, things like jobs, you know, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, is is actually given a, a, a score of seventeen, which is basically uh, the strongest, yeah, um, and and the best uh, out of the the major eight economies. The euro. Right, based off of their GDP, interest rates, and inflation, and other data, um, are given a score of eight, which is basically the worst out of the um, the uh, G8 and the major traded currency pairs. Because a country's economic standing and what the central bank is doing from a monetary policy perspective, whether they're hiking, holding, or cutting interest rates, and what inflation is doing, and where they are in their economic cycle, whether they're in a recession or whether they're in the expansion or boom phase determines a currency's strength or weakness. So this is what I look at, you know, week in, week out, and this allows me to choose the currency pairs that I would want to trade. So an example of that is, I would be shorting, for example, the Euro dollar because the Euro is number eight, which represents the weakest, out of the uh, uh, the eight currencies, and then United States is number one, right? So I'm buying one, and I'm shorting eight, meaning I have to get short on that currency pair. So then all I'm doing 
is looking for what? Supply zones. I don't need to concern myself with buying the euro. I'm not buying weakness. I don't care if the euro is going higher. Yeah, We're looking for value. We're looking for price value and prices will pull back. And when prices pull back to a nice level where you know prices are potentially you know at a nice value area of supply, that's where I want to get short. And again, what I'm looking for is to trade one versus seven or one versus six. So for example, we've got two sixes. So we've got the Swiss franc, yeah? And we've also got the Japanese yen. So for the dollar Swiss, right? One versus six and the, and I'll put that as the yen as well, UJ. Yeah, that's six. I know that all I need to be doing is looking at what? Demand zones. That's it, I'm waiting for pullbacks into demand. And that's how I choose my pairs, right? And that's how we choose our pairs when we're in the group. We trade the strongest currencies, so ones, twos, and threes versus six, sevens, and eights. And uh, again, this uh, uh, um, fundamental analysis spreadsheet should keep us on the right side of the market, yeah? Now, what can go against um, the fundamentals? Well, it's something called risk sentiment, risk on and risk off, right? So risk on is when fundamentals are in play, risk off is when we have um, a bit of turmoil in the market and we have you know, a flight to safety. So there are currencies like the Japanese yen, yeah, and the Swiss franc, which is highlighted in red, yeah, that will strengthen in a risk off environment. Yeah, so we understand that not every single trade is going to work out if there's a risk off, in, if, if you know there's risk off, and risk off would be something, an event like, for example, Chinese trade war, which is what happened in uh, 2019, or Brexit, you know, or any kind of uh, political uh, uncertainty um, or war or anything like that, anything where um, things uh, are not so uh, great or things where there's a lot of uncertainty in the market, right? There's certain currencies that will strengthen in that and we're aware of that, right? But what we plan to do, yeah, what we plan on doing is when prices pull back, let's say, for example, we're trading the dollar Swiss or the dollar yen and in this period here, which might represent, you know, maybe a week or two of uncertainty, yeah, where, where the, the Swiss franc and the Japanese yen may strengthen against the dollar, when things start to potentially sort themselves out. So for example, with the trade deal, China's uh, and, and, and America's trade deal, let's say for example, they come to some sort of agreement. They come to an agreement, which currency do you think is gonna basically strengthen if, if prices come down here? It's going to be the dollar. That's gonna be risk on again, yeah? Because the uncertainty is removed from the market, right? And the dollar will do better in a risk on environment and the Swiss franc and the Japanese yen won't do so well in a risk on environment. And that's where we look to potentially take our trades. So fundamentals first, yeah? We look at the fundamental analysis spreadsheet and we update as, it, as we go along, as the data comes out. These change and as these change, I'm not married to any currency pairs if the United States becomes, you know, four, five, six, seven, or eight, and it starts to become weak, and the euro then starts to move up the ranking, then I'm going to switch my positions. That's basically how it works. So, number two is identifying value on a price chart. And I've alluded to this already in the uh, fundamental bit, but what we don't want to do. Yeah, is let's say for example we have a, a bias and we want to be you know a buyer again of the you know dollar Swiss, right? Dollar Swiss. Now before looking at a price chart, yeah, I've already made up my mind from the fundamentals and the fundamental analysis spreadsheet what currency pairs I'm looking to buy and what currency pairs I'm looking to you know get short on. But what I don't want to do is I don't want to be a buyer at the highs, do I? I don't want to be a buyer up here. Yeah, if prices are going higher, I want to be a buyer at is what is known as a, um, a potential value zone, right? And a bargain price. So let me go into this quickly. And 
which has nothing to do with rally based drop drop based rally that you again that you typically hear from um, supply and demand uh, traders this is you know proof of value this is higher highs and higher lows and let me just get into the concept quickly right so between this low and this high just imagine that you haven't had any you didn't know what was coming you know in the future yeah so ignore this so between this low and this high yeah that is an absolute bargain we know that to be true because buyers push prices higher at this point when prices start to come down this is no longer seen as a bargain this is what was known as an expensive area yeah because there's no more demand at this price zone this is going to be you know the axis price and time yeah that's price so at this price whatever this price is there is no demand yeah there's other profit taking etc but there is no strong demand prices pull back yeah so once prices pull back to a certain area we know that bargain or cheap area buyers got in and this is an expensive area buyers are no longer to willing to push the prices higher now between here and here unless something happens this is going to be you know what was known as a value range now between an expensive area and the bargain area 50% of that would be known as fair value yeah fair value so if I know I want to be a buyer of the dollar over the Swiss franc and I'm only looking for demand zones where do you think the best area to buy would be between this bargain and this expensive area it wouldn't even be fair value the best area or best price to buy would be somewhere around the bargain area wouldn't it that's where because it was proven to be a bargain at this price and as long as the fundamentals haven't changed sentiment may change yeah there might be sentiment changes but fundamentals and fundamentally yeah if the fundamentals are still the same then this is going to be the best area to buy it's going to be the cheapest area because it was proven at this point in time to be a bargain and it may be a bargain here now let's move forward so we got an expensive area right here and we've got a bargain area here now if price goes past this previously expensive area then this is now a bargain area yeah, this is an absolute bargain. Do you know why? Because price has proven it. There are there are buyers buying and buying and buying and buying. So much so that even when they get to that previous expensive area, this is seen, this is still seen as an as a cheap area. So buyers are still buying here. And buying and buying and buying and buying. And then they get to a point where this becomes now expensive this becomes expensive and then we get profit taking etc and again between this high and this low and 50% of that is what fair value yeah where would you want to be where's the best place to buy between this lowest absolute bargain area and this high it would have to be around here wouldn't it it's not here fair value doesn't represent yes there's support and resistance there but you know potentially yeah or some sort of fibonacci retracement but it's not the best area just because prices make their way higher doesn't mean that it is the best area until proven otherwise proof of value rally based drop drop based rally doesn't take into account you know this this you know the the, the, the psychology behind why prices move again we go through the same process this is an expensive area yeah this isn't a bargain this is not a bargain until prices break past yeah clearly go past an expensive area if prices go up to here then that may be demand but that wouldn't be what we would classify a strong area of demand yeah we're looking for strong areas of demand strong areas if prices come up to here yeah and then start to fade away 
then that wouldn't be considered a strong area of demand, would it? Because it didn't go past what is known as the expensive area. Only when prices go past that area, this becomes now an absolute bargain and a strong area of potential value. If prices come back to this area in the future and the fundamentals haven't changed or they haven't changed that much and we still have the dollar is potentially ranked, you know, number one, two or three against the Swiss franc, which is ranked maybe six, seven, you know, or eight because these move depending on the data. And as long as they're ranked, you know, one, two and three versus six, seven and eight here and risk is on. Yeah, because obviously we know that if risk is off, then the Swiss franc will strengthen and this may not hold. But as long as risk is on, that's where the bargain was in the past. And this is where the potential bargain may be in the future. So this is how supply and demand trading works. Right, and this is how I view supply and demand trading is more to just, you know, technical patterns. You have to think behind why prices are, you know, are doing what they're doing. So we use supply and demand zones to determine potential value on a price chart and we filter our supply and demand bias via the fundamentals. And I use daily and weekly time frames and traders constantly ask can i use you know the the hourly and the 15 minute and the one hourly and i've made a video which is going to be on the top right hand side the link will be um there for you to you know that question is answered and again the short answer is you can do whatever you want um the the slightly longer answer would be well you know what's more um impactful uh 15 minutes of, of supply and demand or daily or weekly um supply and demand what is more significant so the reason why I use daily and weekly time frame uh, supply and demand zones is because they are more significant, right? And also each supply and demand zone, we have odds enhancers, right? Not every supply and demand zone is, you know, the same. So for example, one of the odds enhancers I have is fresh areas of supply or demand, right? We want to be the buyer's of fresh areas of supply and demand. We don't wanna be the person or the people that are buying on second and third touches. Actually, second touches are okay, but the, the, the higher probability trade is going to be the, the first touch of a, um, of a supply and demand zone. Another odds enhancer, for example, would be how far does price move, you know, away from you know, the uh, from the demand zone, how far has price gone when it created that demand or supply zone? So we have, I have several, you know, odds enhancers that I use to determine the strength of, or potential strength and potential bargain of each supply and demand zone. Now let's talk